With the overview out of the way, let's get started creating our first study, which is the static analysis. So what we're going to be doing is opening up our piston assembly, and we're going to take a look at setting up a study type, looking at material choices, setting up our constraints, loads, meshing, and also doing a few checks to make sure that we have everything down. So the first thing that we want to do is go into Fusion, and when we open up the piston and crank assembly that's for simulation. Now this is supplied with the course. Now this has been designed completely in Fusion and everything works as is. And what I mean by that is there's a piston, there's a cylinder, they all have mates, everything can move around. So it has all the appropriate motion. And what we wanna do is we wanna analyze the piston, the connecting rod, and the cylinder in this case. And we're gonna take a look at three different types of studies before we take a look at some of the advanced studies that are shown in Fusion Ultimate. Now in this first case, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be applying a force or rather a pressure to the top of the piston and we wanna analyze the stress and the strain that's on our connecting rod. So to do that, first we wanna rotate this to a certain angle, all right? So if we look here, this mate right here shows us the angle that the connecting rod is with the vertical axis. So as we rotate around, you see it's 12 degrees here. As we rotate a bit more, it's 43. Now what we can do is we can right click on that and we can drive the joint. If we drive the joint, we can enter an exact angle. So we're gonna put minus 45 degrees. And then in the top section of our tabs, we wanna capture that position. That's gonna place a feature in our history timeline that'll keep it at this position and we can revert back or suppress that at any point in time. So now when we move things around, if we don't wanna capture the new position, we revert and it goes back to 45 degrees. The next thing that I'd like to do is really take a look at this as an entire assembly. Uh, so we're not going to be analyzing all the components, but we want to make sure that we understand what's going on here. So there is a sort of a dummy piece here that's the crank holder, and that's really just so we have fixed geometry that lets everything float and move and rotate around in space. But what we're looking at here is a simple representation of a single cylinder four-stroke engine. We're going to be analyzing the force that the piston places on the connecting rod and to do that we're going to be fixing the lower end of the connecting rod and then we're also going to end up analyzing some heat properties whether it's the heat through the piston or heat through the cylinder and those are going to come in subsequent modules so in order to get this started I also want to make a note that I am using fusion ultimate and there are a few things that are different that I will point out as we go now, if you're using Fusion 360, the interface is going to look identical, but I do have a couple extra options that you won't have or you won't see on your end. So to get started, I'm going to go up to my model dropdown to change my workspace to simulation. Now, once I do this, uh, instant difference here when I select new study is you will only see four studies in Fusion 360 while I have a couple extras such as buckling and modal frequencies and um, some, op some optimization stuff that are preview technology. So you'll only see four, and I have quite a few extra ones here. But that's okay, because what we're gonna be looking at in this course is static, we're gonna be looking at thermal, as well as thermal stress. So you don't have to worry about us going through any different studies that aren't included in Fusion 360. But in this first example, we're gonna start by selecting static stress. I do also wanna make a note here that we have a settings dropdown, and the settings dropdown will allow us to change the name of the study, remove any rigid body modes. We can manipulate some of the default mesh values, and we can also manipulate some of the adaptive mesh refinement. So you notice that by default, automatic refinement control is on. We have this slider here that allows us to change it to none or high. Now, what thing you'll notice is there's some grayed out information here, but as we drag it up, the results baseline accuracy, we can modify the stress, whether it's von misses or first, second, or displacement. But what this does change is the number of mesh refinements. And what that means is it's gonna go through the model several times to sort of refine the mesh in order to get the most accurate results. Now, when it refines the mesh, it's going to look for a convergence. Now, we're not talking about that in this case, but I just wanna note what some of these options are and that these settings are in the general parameters that you can go into and you can modify before you ever start your study. 
So once we start our static stress, our toolbar looks a little bit different. And that's because depending on what study type you use, the options at the top are going to be different. Uh, for instance, when we do our thermals, we're not going to have a constraints option. 